I hope this video finds you well. Tonight we are going to look at cat dog from string two, and this is the Java solution. The problem states return true if the string cat and dog appear the same number of times in a given string. And we look here, we see cat dog is the first string, and that gets true because we see there's one cat and one dog. In the second case, cat cat returns false because cat appears twice, but there are no dogs. And in the third case, we have cat dog once, and so we get true. I'm going to look at two ways to solve this. The first way, approach one, is going to use reading frames and looping through the string. This is a really important technique. Um, even though there are shorter ways to do this problem using built-in methods, one of which I'll show you, I can't stress enough how important this approach is. And so let's start there. So a reading frame is that idea of looping through an entire string and then reading a part of it. And in this case, I want to read three characters at a time, and I want to check if they're either cat or dog. And so the way I kind of help students first figure out the parameters of their loop is I tell them to write down a concrete example and highlight your first substring to count or read, which would be the first three elements, and then your last one, which would be the last three elements here. Now what's really important is I can't have the counter reach i equals 7, index 7, because then I would get an index out of bounds error, which I'll show you in a second. So we're going to start off here. We're going to make a variable called int cat or c count for cat count, and we'll set that to 0, and we'll make int dot d count for dog count, and we'll set that equal to 0. And I'm going to return c count is equivalent to d count. So basically, I'm, if the number of cats is equivalent to the number of dogs, I'll return true. And I run that, I get true every time. But now what I have to do is I have to actually count the number of times we see cat as a dog in the string. Now here's a little piece of advice. Write one loop. Sometimes students will do one loop to count the cats, another loop to count the dogs. And it works, but think about this. If your string was a million elements long, that means you're going to have to loop through two million elements about if you do it twice. But if you do it once, you just do that one loop once. And it does make a difference if this string was a gigantic string. All right, so let's set up our loop for this case. So the first substring that we're going to have to access, so substring, is going to be 0, 2, 3. Remembering inclusive, exclusive, and if we take the last parameter minus the first parameter, and we subtract them, we get the length. So 3 minus 0 is 3, meaning the substring would be 3. The last reading frame here would be S would be substring, and it would be 6 inclusive to 9 exclusive. And we can see that 9 minus 6 is sure enough 3. So let's set up our loop such that it satisfies this. So 4 int i equals 0 because I'm going to start at index 0. i is less than, and if I want to reach 6, I'm going to say i is less than 7. And then we're going to increment i by 1 each time. So i is equal to i plus 1. And now what I'm going to say is, well, if str.substring at i, comma, i plus 3, so we're going to grab three characters, and we're going to use dot equals cat, then c count is equal to c count plus 1. And if str.substring i, comma, i plus 3 dot equals dog, well then d count is equal to d count plus 1. And we forgot a brace there, and I forgot a brace there. There we go. Okay, so what am I doing here? Is I'm looping through the string, and I'm going to go from 0 to 6, taking three letters at a time, and we can see we start at 0, and the last i we want to reach is 6. And we just, if it's cat, we add 1. If it's dog, we add 1 to d count. So if I hit go now, it runs. Um, I get true sometimes, false other times. But I get this index out of bounds error. And that's because I've set the loop up such that all strings are length 9. So strings that are less than length 9 are going to get an index out of bounds error. And so what I want to do is say, OK, how do I relate 7 to 9? And we can see that that is going to be str.length minus 2. And there it is. Now, a little just piece of advice here. Um, you can really quickly figure out this parameter here, or what to set your i less than to, is it's always going to be minus, it's going to be str.length minus, and it's going to be the reading frame length minus 1. So in this case, your reading frame length was 3, 3 minus 1 is 2, and then so we're getting the length minus 2. Some students do like to play around and be greater than, less than or equal to, and then they can set this value to match 
the reading frame. But I actually prefer to do this because I think it actually translates better to Java. And it's probably the first way I learned it. Okay, let's do this the second way. So let's comment this out. And let's use approach two. Now approach two is going to take advantage of that replace all method and string classing. If you watched our, our video yesterday, you saw how I used that to count the number of times we saw hi. We're going to do the same thing here, but we're just going to check if when we collapse all the cats and collapse all the dogs, if the length is the same, then we know they appear the same number of times. Now I want to just warn you before I go forward. This works really well, but there are some situations where this isn't going to work as nicely. So always take a second to think about it. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a new string called S or C string for cat string. And that's going to be str.replace all. And we're going to replace all the cat with an empty string. And I can make a second string called D string. And that's going to be str.replace all. And we're going to replace all the dog with an empty string. So now all I have to do is return C string dot length is equivalent to D string dot length. And that's it. This is a really nice technique. It's a nice one to have in your back of your pocket. Yeah. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and have a lovely day.